Pink Poodle Crafts, join the Poodle Pack. It's time to get creative and make you laugh. Make your own art today. Pink Poodle Crafts is the way. What a good boy. Hello, crafty family of the Poodle Pack. How are you guys doing today? So today, I'm going to do a video that I should have done a while ago, but um, actually I forgot about it, really, until I got a couple of messages asking me if I was going to do it. And I was like, oh yeah, I forgot all about that. So in another video, I showed you how to do a couple different things. I showed you how to like um, make painty um, uh deli paper i couldn't think of the name of it paint you know painted deli paper this i've used some pieces out of it so it was ripped I ripped off some pieces for collaging purposes so using your different sprays you can make your own papers like this now what you would want to use is different sprays that are like dyes um you wouldn't want to use your oxide sprays because they are they have a pigment in them which is going to make them more opaque uh, dyes are typically more translucent and not as opaque and so you want something translucent so you wouldn't want to use your um, oxide sprays. I mean you can use them you're just going to get a different look. Um, for instance oh, I thought I had some paper. I do. I do. I'm not going crazy. Here's a piece of deli paper. Let me grab an oxide spray. And I'll show you the difference. I wasn't actually going to do this, but this part of it, but I'm going to anyway. So I'll use one of Tim Holtz. I won't even use one of my homemade ones. Um, you'll, it's just a, I think it's just a little bit of a different look. So we'll spray it here. Maybe not. Maybe it's just going to. Is this the right paper? No, I don't think it is. This is wax paper, isn't it? Yeah, this is not the right paper. <laughs> wow, I'm so prepared. This is, um, this is wax paper. This isn't my deli paper. All right. All righty then. At least I don't, I don't think it is because it is thicker than that. Do I not have any? Wait, isn't this a piece? I don't know. I thought I had a piece sitting here. I could be completely wrong. Yeah, this isn't... I don't think this is either. This is... This is tracing paper. Or the Tracing paper. Tracing paper doesn't work. Well, we're going to use this piece of typing paper to pick up the color with. Um, yeah, so anyway, I was going to show you with a <clears throat> thing. Anyway, my point is, you can color it with whatever you want, but if you want it to look a little bit more, um, I think it looks better with any kind of dye ink as opposed to a pigment-based ink, which is what the oxides are. So, it's up to you. Sorry, I, I really thought that those pieces that I had sitting next to me were deli paper pieces. And then it didn't dawn on me until after I sprayed um, sprayed on it that it was not because it had more wax in it than a deli. Deli paper has a bit of a wax in it also, but not as much as other waxy papers. And that was apparently tracing paper, which maybe didn't have wax in it necessarily. Maybe it does. I don't know. But it has something in it that is preventing that to seep in as well as I want it to. So we're just going to make a different type of paper, painty paper like that. You know, don't waste anything. What's the point? No point in wasting anything. All right. I'll put that aside to dry. So now that we wasted, I wasted lots of your time. <laughs> Hello, it's me. If you're watching one of my videos, then you should know that they're not usually short. But we're not going to, this one's going to be kind of short. Um, I promise. Even though it doesn't appear so at the moment. Okay, so anyway, the point I was trying to make was 
just, you know, like here's some examples of dye ink sprays would be the Art Alchemy sprays, Tattered Angels sprays, um, Lindy's Stamp Gang, you, you know, the, the ones that are shimmer, the ones aren't shimmer, they're all pretty much dye sprays. You can make your own dye sprays. I say this all the time. You can get that liquid watercolor stuff that I get from Sargent Art. I'll show you a bottle of that in case you didn't see. It's what I use to make my oxides with along with a pigment uh, or an oxide pigment. Um, but uh, yeah, so this, you can make sprays with this. This would be the same thing. Um, you don't even have to spray it. You can just uh, mix some in water and then wa basically you can watercolor your paper to color it. You can color it whatever way you want. It's up to you. Um, once you color your paper, uh, you know, and get it to the desired color, if you want it to be like mine where it was, you see the difference? You can automatically see the shine to this compared to this all the all you see in this you might see a little pop of mica from the sprays but if i put water on this it's going to reconstitute what i got going on here so if i want to put like um if i want to take like and put a water droplet on here and do that Okay, it's gonna, it's gonna show up. And even if it dries, it's gonna show up that little smiley face I made. It's forever going to be, it didn't show up completely, but anyway, it's going to, hello? My camera hates me. Anyway, it's there. It's hard to see. It's right there and right there. You see those two dots? I tried to make a nose and a mouth, but it didn't work as well. Anyway, they're forever going to be there. Whereas this, which was, um, which I treated with my stuff, is not going to likely give me that same result. Who knows? If I left it sit there long enough, you know, anything's possible. But, you know, it pretty much just wipes right off without any consequence it's not pulling any of the color up and i had a lot of people ask me well how did i do that and also how did i get the sparkle on there because as you see aside from a little bit of the mica that you're seeing you're seeing a lot of sparkle um this one just has the mica i believe yeah i didn't i don't think i treated this one um, this one just has mica. It's usually, you can tell by this one's shiny, this one's kind of not. And the only shine you see here is the mica. Um, same with this one. This one is, this one I only did it in a couple of spots, I think. I don't remember how I did this one, but it doesn't have a lot of shine. I think I only did that in a couple spots. And this one, just this one, you can just see the mica in this one. I don't think I did. Yeah, I didn't actually make this one real shiny. You, you're, whatever shine you're seeing on here is just the mica because there was a lot of mica in what I sprayed for that. So let's see if I can find one that's even less. And if you turn it over on the back side, usually it'll be less than the front. This one has a lot less mica. It has a little mica right here, and that's just what was in the Lindy sprays, or no, I think it was Tattered Angels, so it has a little mica. But if you want it to be shiny and glittery, now you can use two different types of glitter. You can, well, you can use any type of glitter, but you can apply it in a couple different ways. You can get one of these, which I recommend, the Glitter Duster. It's the uh, Stampers Anonymous Glitter Duster. This thing is pretty freaking awesome. Obviously, you you have to use, you know, one glitter per thing. So if you want to put a different color in, you have to empty this out and then put a different color in. So what I did, I just put in a color that I really like and that I think would work fine for pretty much anything. And that's what I'm using. And it's a fine glitter, 
but it's not a super fine. I mean, it's a fine glitter, but it's not like I've seen them more fine than that. I don't know what thickness of glitter you can use up to with this. I'm imagining not, not chunky glitter in any way. So it's pretty much got to be fine glitter, which is pretty much all we use anyway. And so you can use this to apply it, or you can use a glitter. Usually a lot of the glitter bottles come with like a little section where you pop it up and it's got like, you know, like a little shaker where you can shake out the, um, the glitter. You could do that. You are going to get more glitter doing that regardless. Even if you use the shaker, it's still going to come out. So be, just be careful, you know, unless you want like heavy glitter, which I don't recommend because it's going to cover up a lot of your stuff. So the, uh, the big piece of the puzzle here is what's in this bottle, which is not glitter tumble dry. That is just the bottle I used. Um, when the tumble dry stuff was no more. So what I did was I took some water and I took some liquid varnish and it's got to be glossy varnish. Um, so now you could use matte liquid varnish, but if you're going to put it on your, you know, obviously, you know, you could, you could use it. You would just obviously just like I'm going to do here, you put it down first and then you sprinkle your glitter. Um, you don't want to do it the opposite way, especially with a matte varnish, because then as soon as you spray the matte varnish on your glitter is going to not be as sparkly. Um, so anyway, this, you doesn't have to be this kind. This is just something I got at the creative reuse. It's very expensive. I would not use this. If you were going to do it, you could find any you know, liquid varnish, anything that is like runny like this. You don't want to use, I know somebody's going to say, well, can I use glossy Mod Podge and water it down? Um, no, because glossy Mod Podge is more than, it's more than just varnish. It's also glue. And we're trying to avoid that, even though varnish in itself is sticky and that's, what's going to hold down your glitter. We don't want to, because it, in order for you to use Mod Podge, you'd have to water it down so much for it to come through the spray bottle that it wouldn't be effective anymore. It would not look as good. It's not going to, it's just not going to be what you want. So you definitely want a liquid varnish, something that's, you know, like milk in consistency at the thickest. Um, you don't want it to be any thicker than that. And there's all different kinds and they make, you know, some that are even thinner than this, whatever. Find something that is a glossy liquid varnish. And then you're going to fill the bottle up um, like halfway. Start with halfway with varnish and then the rest of the way, you know, the rest of the way with water. You know, one part varnish to one part water. And try that. I don't remember exactly what I did in this bottle. I'm pretty sure it was something along those lines. Or if it's a really thin varnish, like really thin, like this is even... You know, it's not thick, obviously, because I can shake it and it's like very watery. But I've seen varnishes even thicker than this that are like water, thick like, you know, they're thin like water. This is more like a milk consistency, like a 2% milk. Um, you could probably do like that much varnish and that much water. Do you know what I mean? So something like that. Play around with it. You know, your varnish might be a little different than mine. So play around with it. And if you need to add more varnish because it's just not giving you the result you want. Just open the cap and dump a little bit out and add more varnish and keep doing that until you get the result you want. So what you want is, you know, when it's dry, it should be shiny, you know, and, but not stiff, you know, it still should have its fluidity, you know, and then you just use it like you would, uh, you know, this, it, what's nice about this is, you know, if you were to do this with anything else, you'd have to use an aerosol, you know, aerosol spray. And to do that inside kind of sucks. You don't want to do that inside. So this is safe to do inside because it's more of a wet, you know, wet spray. So it's not like you're going to be inhaling a ton of fumes. So it's just better that way. <clears throat> so I'm going to get my glitter thing ready which is like a weird it, the arm like turns so you can do it however you want I usually just have it out to the side and then you're just going to spray your paper down and make sure you mix it every time you use it make sure it's nice and mixed even though there's not really anything in there that could separate no powder or anything but still so then you want to spray it down pretty liberally and make it nice and wet doesn't have to be as sopping as I just did it, but whatever. 
it doesn't really matter. And then you're gonna take your glitter duster and you're just gonna give it a sp spritz of, of glitter. You can do it in just some spots or you can do it across the whole thing. Don't go too crazy because you're gonna, you know, especially if it's if it's a if it's a clear glitter, like you know that clear kind of glitter, you can probably put a little more on. But I mean, this is plenty gonna be plenty glitter. I just gave it, and if you've ever used this, it comes out in a very fine mist. And you don't have to worry about like cleaning up and like, you know, putting it back in the bottle because it's it's, it's never that much where it's a problem. So I'm just gonna clean the excess varnish and whatnot. And you obviously wanna do this on a glass surface or a some sort of silicone mat or something that's gonna be non-stick so that it does not stick. So if you're putting do, doing this on top of like drop paper or something, bad idea because all you're gonna do is adhere it to the drop paper. So I had a little spot there that wasn't covered. So it'll look wet and it'll probably look really wrinkly, but that's fine. Um, so then what you're going to do is you can dry it, which is what I'll do. Um, I'm, I'm not going to edit. So you're going to, you can fast forward through the drying if you want, but I'm going to dry it a little bit while it's down on the glass, but then I'm, I'm going to lift it up in a minute because, um, it's, it doesn't dry as fast if you just leave it to the table like this. So I do this for like, you know, maybe a minute or 30 seconds or a minute. And then I start to do my little um, lifting process, which it's just to keep it from taking forever to dry. Because if you dry it on here, it's just going to, condensation is going to get underneath and it's never really going to dry. I mean, it will eventually, but it takes longer. So you, whenever you're drying a piece of paper, especially a thin paper, um, even watercolor paper, if you're doing mixed media on it or something, or a tag or whatever, you'll know if you ever noticed like the underneath of the table got like, you know, super wet as you were drying the top of it, that's condensation from the humidity of you drying the wet on top is being humid through to the back of it and you get like condensation. So what I end up doing is to avoid that is I'll pick up a corner after a while and I'll actually take a baby wipe and kind of wipe any excess varnish. Usually there's like a puddle underneath. And you can see like some of the some of the color will run initially. Um, but that's fine. It's not going to be that big of a deal. And then you start spraying from the back some. And keep it held up while you're drying it. dry a little of the front, dry a little of the back. But if it's held up, you're gonna you're gonna dry it a lot quicker. I'm gonna get that corner, I'll do that a little bit. And you'll know it's dry when you lay it down and it's not sticking to the paper sticking to the surface anymore. Obviously don't fold it onto itself. Don't let it fold onto itself because you'll probably stick it to itself. See, now this part is just flapping in the breeze. So then I'll go to the next corner. And I'll do a little wiping underneath. Just to help encourage it not to stick to the table. A little bit of flash. And it starts to dry really fast. And you can even like have the dryer sitting kind of underneath of it. You see how I have it? And it'll just start drying and lifting, drying and lifting. You can do that too, but it, it is quicker just to lift it. I try to wipe the excess varnish, not because it matters, not because I care whether it gets back on the back of it if I lay this down, but because it's easier to clean this stuff up when it's wet than when it's dried on my mat, then I gotta take my razor to it sometimes. So usually I'll try to like, excuse me, I'll try to, oh, I ripped it. See, it's stuck on there and I didn't work it off properly, so I ripped it. Um, if you're, a silicone mat is best because it'll come right off and you don't have to worry about any of this. Um, even though a glass mat, it's fine. It's just, I wasn't paying attention and I was talking and, you know, as long as you lift it up carefully, you're going to be fine. I do it on the glass all the time. I hardly ever do it on silicone mat, 
but it does lift a bit easier from a silicone mat. So then I'll just dry this so that it doesn't promote condensation, put it back down. And now I actually I'll turn it this way, which means I gotta wipe this again. Turn it this away and now dry this side. And deli paper doesn't rip like tissue paper does or copy paper when it's wet. This literally ripped because I, it was stuck to the table and I was looking at the screen and I wasn't paying attention and I just kept pulling like a dummy. But if you're paying attention even remotely, it's not going to happen to you. It's just, I'm a dumbass, you know, you know how it goes. But as you can see, it's already, you know, you can already see that it's shiny and glittery and really pretty. You can flip it over and dry it from the back side. And even the back side will have a little bit more of a shine. But see what happens is too, it gets more translucent when you spray it. So that's more translucent than this one. This one you can see my hand. A little bit like the shadow of it but you can really see my hand through this one but that's what happens when you do this technique but the nice thing is now it's not going to most of the glitter will stay on you'll have a little fall off and if you're really concerned about it you could do this do the glitter blah 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 and then um, you can just take it and spray another coat of varnish on it if you really like really are concerned about any kind of fall off on it but really there's like literally like none unless you really rub your hand on it then you'll get like a couple of flecks of glitter but to me that's not a big deal like as long as it's not like heavily falling off but it's on there you know what I mean it's not just gonna fall off so it's not necessary, but if you want to, but see how nice and glittery that is now. So that's all there is to it. It's very, very simple. It's very easy. You could do this and use this on anything too. It doesn't have to be, you know, deli paper. You could do this on copy paper. You could do it on cardstock. You could do it on whatever you want. I could do it on this paper right here. Why not? It's not going to make it translucent. Um, you know, it, it's going to make it shiny and it's going to give it glitter, but it's, that's about it. Um, where'd my glitter thing go? There it is. So I might as well see it's not really changing the translucency of the paper. Did I put enough on there? I probably put way too much. And actually I'm going to lift this up since it's easier to do this to a paper that's stiffer like this and dripping color, but that's all right. Cause I just don't want the glitter to stick, which now this is going to buckle. Nice. Nice job. I was just trying to prevent the glitter from sticking to my table, but that's, you know, whatever. And I probably should have used a different color glitter, but I didn't, so. Oh well. Because this one will really show up on here. But like I said, this is a very fine mist, which is nice about this thing. Um, but I still kind of move it while I'm doing it to make sure the glitter falls you know nice and fine my hands are sticky so they're sticking to the bottle so then like like you did before I start with see because I actually sprayed way too much on here it's like puddling on here and everything so what I'm gonna do is take um, let's try some paper but whatever it should soak that up because it's thin enough and I'm just going to soak a little bit of that up. So don't do what I did. <laughs> don't spray so much that you're like, got this insane amount of, I'm going to put it over there, of puddling going on because, uh, yeah. Okay. Because then you'll have to like fix things and get the pain in the earth. Still got puddling going on. That worked too, so.
trying to prevent the glitter from going all over the floor because I just vacuumed. Like literally a half hour ago. Alright, I'm going to start to lift and dry from underneath. Especially, now if it's a thicker paper, obviously you can lift it, but you still have to dry it from the top. Um, but in this case, I can do it from a little bit from underneath because this is a fairly thin piece of paper. But I'll still do it from the top too. this varnish out from underneath of it so that I don't have to spend 20 minutes later cleaning what could only take me a couple of minutes now. I know somebody might say, well, I can use hairspray to affix the glitter. Um, hairspray is not an art supply. Uh, you know, it's not a good idea to use hairspray for things. I don't use hairspray for things because hairspray as a fixative is never a good idea. I hear, I, idea because I see people, I hear people using that in art journals and stuff like that. Oh, just spray some hairspray. Um, I wouldn't do that because hairspray is not meant to last. It is hairspray. It's meant to be extremely water soluble and it's just, it's soluble over time. Like it's literally not, it doesn't have the adhesion to anything that a good fixative for artwork does because hairspray is meant to break down over time. It is meant, that's why like when you put hairspray in your hair within a couple hours, it starts to fall. Well, that's because it's breaking down and that's what it's meant to do because it's not meant to be permanent. So when you're spraying it on your artwork, it's just such a bad idea. So don't do that because it could eventually start to flake. It could like put a film and start to get like cloudy and you just don't want to mess around with hairspray. It's just not, you know, it's just not, it's just not for artwork and stay away from it um, as much as you can. If, if you have to use something, use nothing or make yourself a spray with an old spray bottle with, you know, some liquid varnish or whatever. So anyway, or, and also no, you can't use gloss medium or any kind of matte medium or <clears throat> that's not the same as varnish. <clears throat> Dang it. Every time I start talking. <clears throat> if it's not varnish, then don't do it. Um, you can use a spray varnish if that's all you have. You just got to take it outside. You could do the same thing I just did. Um, don't saturate your paper with it. You don't need to. Take it outside. If you have like a silicone mat that you can put down on top of some sort of like cutting board or a piece of cardboard or a box, put it inside of a box and then go outside and give it a good spray without letting it pool in places. You know, you just want to give it a good spray. Do your, you know, do you, and that's another thing. Like if you're going to do the glitter, um, you know, give it a spray, make sure it looks shiny, but not where it's pooling and then put your glitter on and then I would wait about five minutes and then I would just go over it with a real quick like psh, 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 spray and leave it at that and let it be done um but yeah so this is shiny and glittery and ready to be used for whatever so and this one too even though all I did was dip it onto there now that one kind of looks cool and it has color too, which looks washed out in the camera, but it actually looks kind of cool. So um, there you go. That's how you make the glitter shiny tissue, or it's not tissue paper. I don't know. I, I Look, I, you can probably do this on tissue paper, but just to get the colors into it that you need, 
with spraying and then everything, you'd have to be so careful um, because tissue paper will rip like like crazy. Um, so just be careful. You could probably do it, but just be careful doing it. Deli paper is going to be your best friend. You can get it on Amazon. Um, if I remember to, I could put a link to um, a gloss varnish, put a link to the glitter duster, put a link to some glitter, and I'll put a link to... Um, what was I saying? A silicone mat. I'll put a link to a bunch of things. Just look below in the description. I'll put some Amazon links to some things that will be very helpful. And um, yeah, so have fun with this. Uh, go, go crazy and <clears throat> make some pretty shiny papers if that's what you like. And have a, have a good time. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this. And I hope you will give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not subscribed because I do all kinds of DIYs and make your own stuff. And I have a playlist called Make Your Own Supplies where I've made, you know, DIY uh, Tim Holtz microglaze, the distressed microglaze. I did, and it works perfect just like his. I did a DIY on the dis distress resist spray. And I did DIY most recently on uh, the DIY on the liquid metallic watercolors and liquid watercolors like make your own kind of liquid watercolors using stuff you just mostly have in your craft room and also the liquid um liquid metals by ken oliver like basically how to make those in that same video and then i just last week did uh diy oxide sprays so that's these here. These are my DIY oxide sprays. You just give them a shaky shake and they are literally oxide sprays. There's almost no difference whatsoever between these and Tim Holtz because I kind of figured out what they actually use. Um, you'll see, go watch the video and you can make a whole set of your own colors. So yeah, go check those uh, videos out and I will talk to you guys later. Um, have a good day and Poodle Pack out.